This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Conan Exiles video. With the release of the 3.0 update right around the corner and the massive rework to the attribute system, you are going to need new builds to get you back into the fight quickly. And today we are going to take a look at the first of many I have in store for you with a build I'm calling the Immortal. So for those of you who just want to see the attributes, that's the first thing we're going to take a look at here today and then I'll get into explaining the rest of the build and why we've chosen the attributes that we have chosen. We're going to start off with 20 in vitality, 9 of those are corrupted, 15 in authority, 10 corrupted, 20 into grit, and 5 into expertise. Let's take a look at vitality, talk about the perks, talk about why we have as many corrupted as we have, and why we stopped just short of the second perk. So the first one gives us passive health regeneration that scales with your corrupted vitality. So the more corrupted vitality you have, the faster your health will regenerate. The uncorrupted version of this just gives you basic health regen. But if you look at this side-by-side -side comparison, you can see that the corrupted version is regening much faster than the non-corrupted version. That is why we take it up to 9 corrupted in vitality to boost that regeneration even more. But we don't want to corrupt the next perk because that takes away our 50% increased healing from healing effects. From what I can tell, this affects any healing at all and you're going to see why this is crazy here in a bit, but we do not want to override that perk. That perk is imperative to the rest of this build. From there, we have the increased maximum health, which because we are almost completely corrupted, gives us about 55, maybe 60 additional health. And then we chose the Glutton for Punishment, which states when you take damage, you regenerate the last instance of damage taken over 15 seconds. So now let's take a look at Authority. So we have up to the second perk in Authority Corrupted, and that is because we want that Flesh Bond perk, which states that the damage taken is split between you and your followers. This means that if you get hit, for example, 100 damage, you will take 50 damage and your follower will take 50 damage. We also have the Frenzy, which comes with that because we can't not have that in order to get to the second one, which just allows our followers to deal some increased damage when we deal damage. And because we have two perks corrupted, they will deal 6% increased damage. Then we stop at Attentive Care, which gives our active followers a 50% increase in healing. Next up, we maxed out Grit. And the reason we maxed out Grit is because of stamina issues. So first off, the Tenacity gets us additional armor and gets us additional stamina. Then we have Endurance, which allows our stamina to regen 25% faster, which because we are so corrupted is super helpful. Next, we have Defensive Posture, which states incoming damage is reduced by 15% while you are attacking or blocking. And the last perk that we have in Grit states that you cannot take more than 25% of your maximum health in damage per hit. This helps reduce the total amount of damage that we can take in one blow even more. You have five additional points after you spec these. These are the core of the build. I put those five additional points into expertise because of carry weight. Otherwise, you have absolute crap for carry weight. I think the base is like 70 and it's kind of rough. As you can see here with the five in it, that gets us up to 175. It's still not great, but 175 is enough to get by. This build relies on a ton of synergies within these perks to basically give us an insane amount of health regen. So we have the 50% increased health regen. We have the base health regen gen, we have the glutton for punishment health regen. On top of that, we don't take all of the damage that we should be taking because we split it with our followers. And on top of that, we can't take more than 25% of our maximum health in one hit. That helps to keep the total amount we can take relatively low, allowing for glutton for punishment to do its job along with the grotesque exercise or whatever that word is, allowing us to regen health quickly. Now for the armor, we're going to use the abyssal armor. This is just the best armor in the game right now. So I'm going to craft it real quick and show you why. So once you have it summoned in, there will be a demon here. He just spawns in, falls over, dies. You loot it off of him and equip it. Now the downside to this armor is that it is timed. As you're wearing it, it only lasts an hour. And when you get hit, it ticks down that time even faster. So that time acts as a timer as well as durability. However, if you get the killing blow to whatever you're killing, you refresh some of that time. It's around three, four minutes or so. Now the reason we're using this armor is 
is because it is by far the best armor in the game. I've went through almost every other armor in the game and I cannot find armor that has bonuses like this armor has. It's honestly a little OP. So first off, you can see it's light armor. It weighs 0.10. Each piece weighs 0.10. It gives us a total of 1,200 armor. It gives us a strength weapon damage increase by 10% and agility weapon damage increase by 10%. It also increases our follower damage by 12%. That's just the helmet. For the chest piece, you can see we get that plus 10 for strength, plus 10 for agility once again. On top of that, we get plus 60 to our HP. Then we move on to the gloves. The gloves are going to give us plus 30 to our carry weight. It also gives us more weapon damage for agility and strength weapons. Next, we have the pants. That's another 60 health, more weapon damage. We have the feet, more weapon damage, as well as plus 15 additional stamina. Our stamina is relatively low, but we're going to go out here. We're going to make sure we have all of the corruption off of us that we can possibly have off of us. You're going to start with being probably around 50% corrupted in order to corrupt your stats, and then you can stand by a dancer to remove any corruption that is possible to remove. We're not fully corrupted as much as we could be within our stats, so we can remove some of that corruption. So you can see now we are at 430 health, which is relatively respectable, but we don't need a ton of health because it's really hard for us to die, and we have 91 stamina. We're going to further boost that stamina with an elixir of freedom. You're going to just chug through elixirs of freedom when you're out doing stuff. You're going to want them all the time. That boosts our stamina up to 102. You're going to want a shield. This is going to allow you to heal when you need to heal because you can just stand there and block and heal relatively quickly, especially for glutton for punishment. It allows you to just heal back that damage while you're blocking. As far as the weapon goes, use whatever weapon you want that you can use with a shield. I'm partial to the short sword. It's not really going to matter because all of our increased damage is coming from this armor. We get a 50% increase in damage just from this armor because each piece gives us 10% increase in damage no matter which style of weapon we are using. You do have five extra points here that you can put wherever you want to put them. If you do not care about your carry weight, you can put those five additional points into agility or strength if you want to, or you could also max out authority, although I don't think that it's necessary. Honestly, I think your best option is to put it into weight because weight is just, it's going to be brutal for you if you don't. As for followers, we are going to use zombies and we're going to have three zombies. I highly recommend just going out and finding tier three archers or tier three fighters. It doesn't really matter, honestly, what you get as long as it can be placed into the world. It can't be a crafting thrall. You could use dancers, you could use bearers, whatever you want to use. I'm just using some random tier three fighters here. You can see they have about 4,000 HP per. It's really easy to re-roll them into four 4,000 HP. If they don't, I think this one here came with like 3,000. I rerolled it one time and got 4,052. Now, one thing I do want to point out is when it splits the damage between you and your followers, it's going to split it evenly with all of your followers. For example, if I take 100 damage, I will take 50 and each of these zombies will also take 50. It doesn't get split between them. It takes whatever a single follower would take and applies it to all three of the zombies. But zombies are extremely easy to get and are extremely expendable. So who cares if they die? You just go knock out another tier three fighter or tier three whatever, and you'll have a zombie with decent HP. All you have to do is take it, place it into a shallow grave, click this, click craft, that's it. There are no other reagents necessary. Now you don't have to use tier three. Tier three is just going to get you the better stats. You can even use a tier four and get even better stats, which you can see here, they can have upwards of 12,000 HP. But considering the fact that zombies are supposed to expire naturally over a given period of time, I don't recommend using your tier four fighters or tier four whatevers to turn them into zombies. Tier threes are much easier to get and will do the job. We're going to have all three of these zombies follow us because they're going to help increase the amount of damage that we can do. And we're going to run up here and we're just going to fight this scorpion. And I'm going to take a few hits from this scorpion and I just want you to see how much damage we can actually absorb when we get hit by a scorpion. And what we're going to do is I'm actually going to tell two of these to stop following me because I don't want them all to take damage here. Right from the get go, we're just going to let one take some of my damage that I'm going to take. And I'm actually going to set this one to passive. So it's not going to attack anything. Now you could just do this if you wanted to, but 
but your damage isn't as great as it could be, and that is why we rely on the zombies to help balance out the total amount of damage that we can do. This build is focused on surviving pretty much anything. It's not really focused on damage, although with the zombies, you'll see, we can take this guy out relatively easily. So we're gonna go over here, I'm gonna poke him, and I'm gonna let him hit me. All right, you see he hit me, and I am poisoned. I'm just gonna block him, and look how we're regening even though we're poisoned. It's, it's insane. We're poisoned right now and we're back to full health. So we took that poison and we're back to full health and we're good to go. Our zombie took a little bit of damage there, but overall it's relatively fine. So I'm going to let him hit me a couple of times. I'm just going to let him go to town. Come on, go to town. And you can see as we're getting hit, our zombie is also taking pretty decent chunks of damage over there. I'm going to try to dodge being hit by poison, but you can see our zombie is being hit. Now, Oh God, we're going to die. Watch this. This is a base crap weak aloe. That's a, that's a, the worst aloe potions you can make. Okay. Glutton for punishment it should kick in here and start to heal us. And it should bring us back to full. Yep. There we go. And we're back to full. Okay. So here we go. We have all of our zombies. They are all healed up and ready to fight. And I just spawned in a random boss here. We got the watcher. I'm going to run up here. Now you can see, I just juiced them up with a frenzy. I also highly recommend feeding them some steaks to give them increased regen as well. We're going to go through here and give them increased regen. Now, they will honestly do a pretty good job at attacking the target and damaging it, especially if you keep them juiced up as they are there. But standing around and watching them fight is not really any fun, so we definitely want to get in here as well. And also, you do need to keep attacking to keep them frenzied. The frenzy doesn't last a crazy long time. I'm just letting him hit me. I just don't even care. I just don't even care. First off, he attacks so slow that I can just tank those freaking hits and it's absolutely fine. And if anything should happen where, oh no, I think I might be in trouble, pop a weak aloe extract and bam, we're back to full health. It's really hard for something like this guy to do a lot of damage to us. The scorpion that we were fighting a little bit easier for it because it does poison us, which gives us extended damage over time. But this guy right here can just beat on me all day probably and not, not actually kill me. He will damage my armor a lot. You can see here, my armor is already taken a beating. It's already at half. So that's one of the big downsides to this armor. But if I get the killing blow to this guy, it will add a little bit back onto that. That armor like I said I think it's about three or four minutes but yeah you get the idea it's uh it's a really strong build especially for guys like this so what if you want to do something like storm the castle let's run in here and let's storm the castle and let's see what happens if we just fight a bunch of different things here we go so we're just fighting a bunch of different things right now and you can see stamina is going to be a big issue it's just there's not much you can do to get around that when you are as corrupted as we are a hundred I mean it's man more manageable than having what you could have so I mean I mean, you can make this work relatively well with 100, but you just have to be careful when you can't go too crazy. But even if you do, you're dang near immortal, which is why we're calling the build immortal. So it's not too big of a deal. You can just kind of stand there and take hits. You'll be fine. You'll be absolutely fine. Zombies are just going to wreck pretty much everything we run into here. You can see Glutton for Punishment almost has us back up to full health. We're just going to run in here to both of these guys. I'm going to jabby jabby pokey pokey that guy. Another thing I like about the short sword is it's relative easy on stamina for us as well we're just in it right now oh look I may have taken a little bit too much damage oh nope I'm good one other downside to this armor is you can't put an illusion on this armor so this is what you're gonna look like as you saw the armor is extremely strong gives us really good bonuses so it's worth looking like this even if this isn't what you want to look like in order to have all the bonuses that this armor brings once again this armor is extremely OP I look for it to be nerfed at some point or the other armor brought up to this armor which is what I think should happen instead of nerf nerfing this armor because the other armor is just rather lackluster right now all right well hopefully you found this video helpful and informational if you did consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free you all are absolutely amazing people if you would like to become an official channel supporter check out the links in the description below if you enjoyed this video please leave a comment down below let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.